6 mobile app is now even better. Download it today. Hot and humid end for the month of August. Mostly dry and a good amount of sunshine. Just a few stray showers around through Labor Day weekend. But then next week, some big changes coming our way. I'll have all those details coming up. Right now on this Channel 6 at 6, the credit card spending saga continues in the Augusta Mayor's office. Why the commission is so divided on this issue. As your news at 6 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6 at 6. Good evening, everybody. I'm Brad Means. Thanks for joining us. Jenny is off tonight. Coverage you can count on begins with growing frustration as Augusta just can't seem to find a solution to the mayor's credit card controversy. As we've reported, a commission committee recommending the mayor stop using his personal credit card and use a city one. But city policy puts spending limits on its cards and the mayor doesn't support those. He needs more money in certain circumstances, so he's just been using his own. George Escalo shows us how other Georgia cities deal with this. A commission committee recommending Mayor Johnson start using a city credit card, but not deciding on what the spending limits should be. To pigeonhole the mayor based on uh, his position and a personal vendetta, in my mind, I don't think it's the right answer. I think that when you, again, we've given specific examples of Savannah, Macon, Columbus, of what they do. The mayor has been using his personal credit card to avoid spending limits on city cards which is $5,000 a month. In Savannah, the mayor has a $50,000 a month limit, $20,000 in Macon, and $10,000 in Columbus. Mayor Johnson wants a $15,000 a month limit and is growing frustrated as the issue persists. I find it best to be continuing to be in this process in this meeting to talk about how does the mayor conduct the business of this city? It is embarrassing. I think that um, some of my colleagues want to dig their heels in because of the mayor and whether they supported him or not. The city's current credit card policy was adopted three years ago, and some say what's embarrassing is the mayor not wanting to follow a policy that was in place when he was elected. This policy came out of the last administration as a result of that spending. And so the only thing that's embarrassing is the fact that we still have departments, and I will say departments just to be kind on camera, that refuse to follow city policy. And Augusta later seem to be reaching their limit when it comes to getting this credit card issue behind them. In Augusta, George Escala, WJBF, News Channel 6. Now our chief meteorologist, Jenna Petracci, joining us now for our first look at the weather. Hot and humid, Jenna. Yeah, no other way to put it, Brad. It is just plain hot, feeling like summertime, and it's making me think of the beach. So here's a look at our Terry member on Hyundai Skyview Cam. Beautiful blue skies here at Edisto Beach. What a nice view. And as we look at satellite and radar here, you can see the coastline of Georgia and South Carolina nice and clear thanks to this high pressure overhead. For us, just a few fair weather cumulus clouds passing by. Nothing significant will not bring us any rain. Temperatures are in the low to upper 90s in some spots. Augusta is sitting at 93. Same thing in Barnwell, 97 in Evans. Millen, you're at 94. Wrightsville at 96. Look at all these 97s. 97 in Sparta, Crawfordville, Lincolnton, Edgefield, you're at 94. The humidity is a bit higher than it was over the past couple of days. We're now seeing 50% in Allendale, but really the relative humidity isn't too bad in some of our northern and western counties, so it's more so a dry heat. But nonetheless, it's hot. Heat index up to 102 in Lincolnton, 100 in Bamberg, Allendale, 102 as well in Sylvania. And the winds are coming in pretty light, seeing a lot of calm winds, only up to 6 miles per hour in Augusta, 5 in Barnwell. The rest of this evening, we will have a southeast wind up to around 5 miles per hour. Mostly sunny skies, temperatures dipping down into the upper 80s by 8 o'clock. A warm and muggy night on tap, and then more heat and humidity to look forward to tomorrow. I will have more details on that coming up, plus a look at the cool down next week so stay with us but back to you brad all right jenna thanks football fans you already know georgia and clemson go at it saturday but the battle is already underway between those two teams at the blood bank 
News Channel 6's Hannah Latier joining us now live at Shepherd in Evans covering the donation domination event. Hannah. That's right, Brad. The Bulldogs dominated in last year's battle, receiving 1,000 more points than the South Carolina Gamecocks. It looks like that may be the same case again this year against the Tigers. When donors come in and roll up their sleeves, they get to vote for either the Bulldogs or the Tigers. Each vote equals three points for three lives saved. As of yesterday, the Bulldogs have 528 points and the Tigers have 225. After voting, donors get a donation domination t-shirt and a free Chick-fil-A sandwich. Fans think it's nice to have a little friendly competition for a good cause. I love it. It's so nice. I mean, it's definitely a perk, um, but I, I love all these shirts, the shirts and everything. This is going to be fantastic. I'm O negative, and so it's just a universal donor, and I just feel, like, obligated. It's part of what I do, and it makes me feel like I'm a part of this community. It's my duty as a person. And that battle ends on Friday, so if you want your team to win, now is the time to come in and donate. And I'll have a full list of all of Shepherd's locations and their times at WJBF.com. Live in Evans, Hannah Latier, WJBF News Channel 6. The GBI tonight warning people about voting scams that can steal your data or your money. They involve fake voter registration, where somebody might encourage you to register, and then they install malware on your device. If you're donating to a candidate, just go straight to their campaign site. And don't answer robocalls. The bad guys sometimes use AI to record your voice. So it's a lot of awareness, it's a lot of education on our part, and then like many other things, it's working with our, especially our federal partners, in ensuring that we're doing what we can to prevent it, but also to track down any instances of cybercrime. You can always register or check on your voter status on the Secretary of State's website. If you're donating, check the Federal Trade Commission site to see if a political action committee is registered online to make sure it's legitimate. You know, several studies now listing Augusta among the top 30 most overweight cities in the country. Bria Smith spoke with health and wellness experts on how to have a healthier lifestyle. In our day-to-day -day schedule, it can be easy to grab a quick bite, but that can sometimes mean an unhealthy option. Make sure you get your food and your, because your food is what starts everything. Right. So if you're not having your food, you can work out every day. But if you don't have your nutrition well and your food intake right, you won't do good at all. Dr. Francisco Jacome is a bariatric surgeon in Augusta. He says sometimes obesity isn't only about our lifestyle. Treated as a hormonal disorder, number one, number two, treat as an emotional disorder as well because mm -hmm. emotions are extremely complex and those can influence also greatly in how we make our choices for food right okay. and number three obesity gotta come with a plan for the future that plan is completely up to your personal goals but experts say it should consist of a physical and healthy balanced diet You're actually being active you can walk you don't have to lift weights you can walk do small little home workouts anything of that nature to make you get active. I tell my patients that the trick, the trick is not to make a decision, this is what I want to do forever, is to set up a system to support the new habits that you want to develop. Dr. Hakome says while there are other methods to lose weight, like surgery or certain medications, it's important to have a goal in mind and the discipline to accomplish it. If we just learn to be patient, what makes people successful are not big decisions, not a big decision that, okay, I'm going to get the shots today, or a big decision, I'm going to have surgery today. That is not necessarily what creates the success. What creates the success is the small decisions that we make every day. Whether your day is packed with a full to-do list or a more simplified day, healthcare professionals urge you to incorporate a balanced lifestyle. To find out more about how you can seek professional health advice and examination, visit WJBF.com. In Augusta, Bria Smith, WJBF News Channel 6. Good advice there. Coming up, a bus tour through Georgia. Why the vice president is making these visits next. And hot and humid conditions sticking around with little to no rain in the forecast, but things will change next week. Temperatures go down and rain chances go up. Stay with us for all the details. Hi, E.T. And Jenna back with another check of our weather. 
Well, it's hot for sure. And of course, it's always hot in August, but typically around this time of the year, we're seeing more so low 90s. We're seeing a lot of upper 90s today, and it will be the same way tomorrow. So heat stress potential is high. I'll have more details on the forecast, plus a look at that cool down coming. Stay with us. The People's Court, weekday mornings at 10 on News Channel 6. Welcome back and good Wednesday evening. Plenty of sunshine in some of our southern line counties. Here's a look in Emanuel County on our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam. Downtown Swainsboro looking fantastic. It's certainly hot and humid though. 93 feeling like 99 when you factor in that dew point of 70. Humidity of 47%. Really doesn't take super high humidity to make 93 feel much hotter than that. Luckily we're at least staying below the 100 degree mark here in town. Some places have reached around 102 today at the highest for that heat index. It's all because of this high pressure over the southeast acting as a heat dome and trapping in that heat across much of the country all of this week. Jet stream very, very far to the north. Even places like Bismarck, 84 degrees, pretty warm for them. 89 in Omaha, 93 in Oklahoma City, 99 just to the northwest of us in Nashville. Around the CSRA, we're seeing anywhere from around 93 to 97 degrees this evening. 96 in Sparta, 94 in Sandersville. We did have a lot of 97s just a few moments ago. Looks like we're now starting to cool down just a tad, and tonight we'll go down to a low of 71. Patchy fog possible once again, otherwise another mostly sunny and mostly dry day. Only a few stray showers possible. Heat index up to 104 on Thursday, high temperature of 96, so getting just a little bit hotter. For Friday, we'll start to go down a bit, feeling like 102 and then eventually 101 for your Saturday. So your Labor Day weekend outlook looking pretty good when it comes to the sunshine and the dry weather. I've lowered the rain chances just to 10% for Saturday and Sunday, up to 30% for Monday. So at that point, we could have a few thunderstorms around. And Monday will be the last hot day, 92, and then a huge drop off to 85 on Tuesday, 83 for your Wednesday. So we're back to the cooler temperatures like we had last week. The difference is that the cooler temperatures will come with the cloud cover and also some pretty decent rain chances. As of now, going with just 40% Tuesday and Wednesday, it's possible that we could increase that. In the meantime, though, high pressure overhead. We still have this disturbance around the area and a lot of southerly flow coming in ahead of a cold front. So it's possible you may run into a brief shower tomorrow or Friday, but definitely not a washout. There's the cold front getting closer on Saturday. Eventually by late Sunday into Monday is when we'll have that slightly higher chance of rain. Speaking of the rain, there's a tropical outlook here for possible Francine forming. This could happen over the next seven days or so. So nowhere near us at the moment. We'll keep you updated though. Uh, we'll be monitoring that over the next seven days. Lows tonight will be in the low 70s and our highs tomorrow will be in the mid 90s. Some of us even in the upper 90s. In your 10 day forecast showing those cloudy, rainy and cooler conditions around the middle of next week. Then it looks like we'll be drying out by next Friday back to sunshine into next weekend and those cooler temperatures will still stick around. Now congratulations to today's umbrella winner. That is Jerry Scott from Tignall. Congratulations, Jerry. You can pick up your Viper 6 umbrella here at the station and sign up to win yours on WJBF.com. All right, Jenna, thanks. Sports is now. What's the big secret right now? The Scholar Athlete Awards are brought to you by Jefferson Energy Cooperative, Rebath of Augusta, McDonald's, and WJBF News Channel 6. WJBF sports coverage you can count on. Every week we honor an exceptional athlete who's also a leader in their school and in their community. This week's scholar athlete is Grovetown's Amari Jackson. Amari plays basketball for the Warriors where he earned all region honorable mention honors last season and in the classroom he has great grades as well. He's been on the honor roll every semester of his high school career. His parents and coaches say they're so proud of all of his hard work. It's just a blessing. I really want to thank God first and just thank my family and the people I have around me that push me to be better every day. And I just try to stay the same every day and progress as a person and a better teammate and in the class.
classroom. I am so proud. Uh, Amari is uh, a very humble and well-mannered child, so I am so grateful for that. He is reaping his harvest and being able to receive this award. He's always uh, wanting to go to the gym. He wants to get better. He wants to work on his craft, so you know, he's, he's dedicated to the cause. I'm um, just seeing him grow from when he came here from middle school to who he is now. Um, he's somebody that I fully uh, like know and understand when he gets out into the real world, he's going to make an impact. Amari has quite a few college offers. He hasn't decided on a school yet, but he knows he wants to study cybersecurity. Congratulations to Amari. It's a very exciting day for the Braves organization as four of their top draft picks will be heading here to play for the Augusta Green Jackets. Left-handed pitchers Cam Caminiti, Carter Holton, and Enrique Hernandez, as well as right-handed pitcher Logan Samuels, will all be making their debut next season. We can't wait to see them at SRP Park. Meanwhile, in Minnesota, the Braves are looking for their first series sweep since mid-June as they face the Twins for Game 3 on the road. First pitch is at 7.40 p.m. with Cy Young candidate Chris Sale getting the call. I'll have highlights tonight at 11. Ludwig Oberg put on quite a performance in April when he fired a 69 in the final round of the Masters to finish second behind Scotty Scheffler. Then he followed that up with a top 10 finish at the RBC Heritage, and last week he finished second at the BMW Championship. Now, he hasn't won on tour yet this season, but that could change. The fifth-ranked golfer in the world says he's focused on getting prepared for the tour championship. I haven't ever seen the golf course, so I don't know uh, what to expect. Uh, we're going to go play at this nine uh, this afternoon. and. Um, but yeah, it looks like there's some new changes uh, to, the, to the green area, some surfaces, and some holes might look a little bit different, um, which uh, we'll, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll sure spend some time figuring out those things and uh, make sure we're ready on Thursday. Alberg will tee off with Rory McIlroy at 1.38 p.m. on Thursday. Finally, it is time to vote for our Football Friday Night Player of the Week. This week's nominees are Hepsiba's Beyonce Bird, Greenbrier's Braden Stevens, North Augusta's Corey Tillman, and South Aiken's Javon Edwards. The poll is on WJBF.com. You can vote once a day until Friday. The winner will be announced during our Football Friday Night show, so be sure to get your vote in as we pick our Football Friday Night Player of the Week. All right, Kira, we appreciate that. We'll be right back. There are trucks. Sundays. It's the new season of Collector's Call on MeTV. We're taking it to the next level with more memorable collections. Sundays at 6.30 on MeTV, WJBF 6.2. Most trusted, most accurate, most watched weather team, 5 5 for 6. Weather coverage you can count on. Check out the most beloved Taco Bell in America. According to people on Google Maps, it's this one in Pacifica, California, near San Francisco, right there on the ocean, perfect for sunsets, whale watching, even a patio with a great beach view. That's Google Maps. Yelp just gave it three and a half stars out of five. Uh, meanwhile, we got a Washington Road view, but... Yeah, we'll take it, though. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I love our Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah, I love Taco Bell everywhere, but, man, that's beautiful. It yeah. is. Beautiful views. Well, our 10-day forecast showing partly cloudy skies throughout the weekend as well. Temperatures staying hot, humidity staying high, low chances of rain for now. Then the rain chances go up next week with the temperatures going down. 85 next Tuesday, 83 next Wednesday. Could even see some upper 70s in there. All right, Jenna, thanks a lot, and thank you all for watching.